Hi, this is Philip again, and welcome to part three of our Git tutorial. So recall that in parts one and two, we created a Git repository um, in a directory and added, modified, and deleted some files from the repository. And I showed you how to use the um, Git log and other commands to see your repository contents. So this is great if you're one person working alone, but it's probably not a good setup if you want multiple people to collaborate on the same project. So in this tutorial, I want to show you how to use a website called GitHub to collaborate on your Git projects. So to do that, I'm going to create a new directory called GitHub Demo and switch into it so it's empty right now. I'm going to switch to my web browser um, and visit the github.com website. So GitHub is a service um, provided on a website, um, which is different than Git, which is a program you run on your computer. So contrary to popular belief, Git and GitHub are not the same thing. Git is a program that runs on your own computer, and GitHub is a website and service that's online. You can use Git without GitHub like we've done in the previous two demos, but a really common use case for Git is to use it actually with GitHub. So the GitHub website has some helpful information about how to get started, such as creating an account. So if you click on Create Repositories, it'll show you a nice tutorial here as well. So I'm going to create a new repository here by clicking the plus sign and new repository. I need to give it a name. So I'm going to call it my cool repository and give it a description. This is a cool for my demo. The default in GitHub is a public repository, so we'll leave it at that. And then let's um, initialize the repository with a readme file. So um, I set these options and I say create repository. And now I have a repository under my username, pgbovine, slash my core repository. So this repository right now has one single file called readme.md. MD is a special kind of file called a markdown file, which allows you to write um, notes and, and add um, things like bold and headings. So this is great. It's on the website. On the GitHub website, we have a my core repository. But to actually work with it, we need to actually make a copy of the repository on our computer. So to do so, what we do is we need to get this, HTT, this clone URL. And there's several ways to do this. And um, one way is to click the HTTPS version. And you can read in the GitHub documentation about how to do this in more detail. So we're going to highlight it, copy it, and then we're going to paste it into our terminal here. So the command here is git space clone space the um, URL. So if you press enter and everything works properly, um, after you run it, it should say cloning into my core repository. So when this is all done running, when you ls, remember GitHub demo was empty before, there's actually a new directory called my core repository. So I can cd into it now. So now notice that I'm in GitHub demo, which is this directory I started with that I did the clone command in. And after the clone command runs successfully um, with this URL, magically a new my cool repository directory now exists that I can cd into. OK, so what does this directory contain? If I type ls, it actually contains exactly one file, which is the readme.md file. Recall that readme.md was the file that was created automatically by GitHub when I created my account. So notice how if I, if I load this page here, there is exactly one file in my repository called readme.md. So um, now what I can do is I can just edit that readme file and do whatever I want with it. So I'm going to go in my text editor and edit readme.md. So um, md is markdown, which is a text file based format for um, writing notes. And it will uh, do things like give you headings or bold or italics. So let's start editing it. So I'm going to add a line called, um, this is really neat. Another cool line, yet another cool line. OK, so I'm going to say, uh, save it and then quit. So now if I want to see what I've changed, I say get diff. And lo and behold, in green and with plus signs, it says these are the lines I, I added just now, right? which is exactly what I typed. And if I like those changes, what I can do is I can commit those changes. So if we do git commit. Um, actually, let's do git status just to check, double check. Good. So if I do git status, it says that um, the changes, um, I modified readme.md. So what I want to do now is I want to commit all the files that I modified. So I do git commit, 
dash a dash m. Um, I'll say modified a bit. Okay, so now I committed it. Now I do git log to see my log. So notice how when I created the git repository on GitHub, GitHub actually gave me one initial commit. And now I um, made a second commit called modified a bit. And recall the contents of my readme.md is uh, now has a bunch of lines, another cool line, another cool line. So we committed it, great. So let's go to the GitHub website and look at the update. So I'm gonna reload and see my updated file. But wait, hold on, this says my core repository, this is a core repository for my demo, wait a minute, I didn't, I didn't show my new lines, that's weird because I edited readme.md, it says this is a core repository, this is really neat, another cool line, yeah, another cool line, wait, hold on, this doesn't actually show up. But, okay, so what did I forget? Did I forget to commit it? No, I didn't forget to commit it. If I do a git status, it says nothing is nothing is to be committed, I'm, I'm done. Um, if I do a git log here, it shows that I modified this file a bit, and I actually did a commit. So what's going on here? I committed my change, I did everything right, but it doesn't show up on the GitHub website. No matter how many times it's reloaded, it doesn't show up. So this is a point that really confuses a lot of beginners because you could do everything right on your computer, but in order to actually see the change on the GitHub website, you need to do one more command, um, which is called a git push. So um, I'm gonna do a git status again to see what's going on. And notice how what this says is that it says your branch is ahead of origin master by one commit. Use git push to publish your local commits. So to break this uh, phrase down, it says that I actually am one commit ahead of the version on the GitHub server. So GitHub is a server somewhere on the, uh, on the internet, and I have a version on my computer. This is my own computer, right? This is my computer's version. So my computer actually has two commits on it, and the GitHub version only has one commit, which is the commit that was originally um, was originally made. So recall that uh, in, for me using GitHub right now, what I did was that I took my laptop, I did a clone, which grabbed the version from GitHub to my computer, which only had one commit on it. I modified this to add a second commit, but I didn't actually tell the server that I actually um, updated it. So what I need to do is run one more command called a push to push my second commit up to the server so the GitHub server knows that I have two commits instead of just one commit. So push is the command that we need. So if I recall, if I go back to the server um, and I look at my repository, um, and I look at the uh, commits, it says the latest commit is here. There's only one commit, which is the initial commit. It doesn't show my second one at the moment. So uh, the trick here is if I do git push and I press enter, um, I have to actually enter my username and password. So, okay, so if I enter everything right, it'll actually push my changes to the GitHub repository. So now if I switch to my um, GitHub website again and I hit reload, it actually shows my change. And notice how it actually says, this is a cool repository, this is neat, another cool line, another cool line. If I look at the readme file, it actually shows all the changes now. And once again, if I look at the latest commit here, it actually shows um, visually, which is really nice, that I did a commit that added six lines, the latest zero lines, and those are the six lines that I added. So in sum, in order to use GitHub, you have to first clone the repository with git clone, and then you do your usual git thing on your computer, like git status, git log, git diff, um, and all your things, and git commit, usually dash a dash m, with a message. But the really important thing is that everything stays on your computer until you do git push. Git push is the command that takes all of your changes that you've committed on your local computer here and pushes it up to the GitHub server. So until you do a push, 
the GitHub server doesn't know that you made the changes on your computer. So you really need to do that push step. And after you push properly, then when you go to the website, it'll actually update with the latest information. And the nice thing about having things on GitHub is that you're no longer stuck with things just on your computer. Um, you have it all backed up on the website there online. So in case your computer crashes, you still have a copy on the GitHub website.